Hi folks, I thought it would be fun to outline what I think are the the natural steps that people take these days when when building uh, their own RC planes from scratch. I think a lot of people start out not actually building, just dreaming about it, and then move on to flight test, and after doing that for a while, maybe advanced foam bore designs like Experimental Airlines and Andrew Newton uses, and uh, then move on to what I'm starting to do now, which is uh, cutting out your own wings from uh, from foam core and shaping and possibly covering with uh, um, some sort of laminating film or in my case I'm starting to use fiberglass covering on top of foam. The highest level of um, scratch building I think is uh, seen in people who make uh, all fiberglass bodies starting from a plug that they've that they've made and mold that they've made um, and or people who design and build all balsa uh, planes, especially large-scale balsa planes. Um, I may never reach this level of building. I think they're, these two methods are about equally demanding from what I can tell as an outsider. So here's a um, hot wire cut XPS Home Depot foam uh, wing cut out of uh, two inch thick stock material and um, it took quite a few tries uh, to cut out a, a halfway decent looking wing like this. Uh, it's not easy to do. I, I may make a video about hot wire cutting, uh, but there are already a, a lot of really good videos out there. Uh, what this video is mainly going to be about is the fact that I've started covering uh, this kind of foam with fiberglass. Here's the brand of uh, fiberglass cloth that I used. Um, I've never worked with fiberglass before, but I've, I've heard that three-quarter ounce is about the right weight uh, for small wings, um, small projects for making things uh, stronger, but not uh, much heavier. This is what the uh, fiberglass looks like out of the package. I've never worked with this material before, and I'm sort of amazed by a fabric made of glass. It's just, it's kind of amazing. The nice thing about this three-quarter ounce material or 20 gram per square yard, it, obviously it's very light and it's soft enough and flexible enough to go around corners really, really well um, with just about any help from um, an adhesive. So the purpose of this video is to compare how good uh, these two adhesives are at covering XPS foam specifically uh, with specifically lightweight three-quarter ounce fiberglass cloth. I've read a lot about uh, the polycrylic resin, which is a water-based polyurethane, and I want to compare it to the, the old standard, which is a finishing resin like z -poxy or West Systems. Um, and uh, I thinned out that epoxy to about a one-to-one -one ratio between epoxy and denatured alcohol. So I started out with uh, two identical weight blocks of SPS foam, both three and a half grams, and both sanded with about 150 grit sandpaper to um, to make some similar compound curves. So I added uh, one layer of fiberglass uh, to each block and covered it with uh, that super thin 50-50 uh, ratio of Z-poxy and alcohol on the block on the right, and um, a layer of the polycrylic polyurethane and fiberglass on the left. And then I uh, added a second layer to each one. I let each uh, coat dry overnight and came back and sanded off the excess. And each uh, covering resulted in a really good adhesion and a nice smooth paintable surface from what I could tell. Uh, so the purpose here was to test uh, the adhesion and they both pass with flying colors. I wanted to check the uh, the weights of these two covering methods, also their puncture resistance and rigidity. This is the apparatus I use to check for puncture resistance. It's just a metal ruler and to this I added lipo batteries which I have a lot of and I, I measured the puncture resistance uh, of the two blocks uh, as far as how far in a nail would go with this uh, gram weight. Here's the simple setup I used to check for um, the rigidity improvement uh, that this covering gave each chunk of foam. Each foam chunk is about an inch in thickness 
so any resistance to um, bending or breaking I attributed to, since it was the same for the two blocks, uh, the weight of the um, fiberglass plus the adhesive. Here's a summary of all the data that I gathered, uh, mainly qualitative data, but still pretty useful, I think. The, uh, the Z-Poxy and uh, thinned with alcohol uh, when it dried, still added with uh, fiberglass and two coats about nearly 25% to the weight of the foam itself. Um, the polycrylic is lighter, adding only a little over 10% with two coats. Uh, the puncture test was, uh, was, was pretty interesting. The, the polycrylic coating uh, was most resistant to punctures and seemed to have kind of a rubbery texture, uh, which, which imparted uh, this, this property of puncture resistance. Uh, the bending breaking test was pretty interesting too. Uh, the polycrylic block um, was less resistant to rigidity testing forces. It, it bent much more quickly and it retained the new bend that it had acquired under weight of 3.6 kilograms. So it was pretty much permanently damaged by that much weight. Whereas the, uh, the Z-Poxy covered block uh, was definitely more rigid. So here's how I'd summarize all the findings of this uh, nutty little experiment I did. I think polycrylic is uh, cheaper, it's lighter, it's easier to use, uh, it's much less uh, stinky, and um, it's more resistant to punctures. Uh, but Z-Poxy is definitely, or any other epoxy probably, the clear winner when it comes to offering something like a wing, uh, improved rigidity, along with the fiberglass of course. So I've decided on the next plane I'm building to use uh, the Z-Poxy on the wing and because of the puncture resistance and the light weight I'm going to use um, multiple layers of the polycrylic on the fuselage of this new plane. So I wouldn't really say one is better than the other, I would just say they maybe have different uses. Thanks for watching. Take care.